Hi everyone, this is Prashad Parthiban. Today is my 50th training video. I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you. I've been getting messages saying that thank you for your videos. It should be like the other way, like I should thank you all because every time I take a training, I have to prepare a lot. During this preparation process, I myself am learning a lot. So thank you for continuous support and I will do my best to give quality videos in the future. So coming to today's topic, today I'm going to take a training on scaled agile framework. I know most of you would have heard about this topic. Many companies are implementing scaled agile and it has been a very successful framework. So I thought of sharing my experience. So it's more of like my learnings, I would say, because I know that scaled agile framework has been getting implemented in many companies. I took a two day training course. So I understood the concepts and then I am ready to you know, implement it. This is what I would always recommend to my fellow members. Even though my client is not using SAVE, I always make sure that to understand the current trend and then make myself updated so that when the opportunity knocks my door, I'm ready for the, to grab that opportunity. So let's focus on today's training. What is scale agile framework? So if you see this column number one, team. So most of us are working on agile. So I think most of you are very well know aware about this terminologies and the processes. So if in agile, we have a team where we work on user stories and sometimes enablers. Enablers are those that are like, you know, initial kind of setup that we have to do before kind of doing the user stories, like setting up my database environment and other things. Now, we all know product backlog, which is a base for us to work on user stories and product backlog is going to have all the user stories listed so that we can work on the priorities based on the priorities. Now it depends most of the team have two week sprint or three week sprint based on the project needs and we have some roles like scrum master, product owner and development team. Now this team framework is very much successful right we have user stories, we have the required roles then why do we need scaled agile? So a couple of problems, right? Like if I have a company, it's not that I am going to have only one team. There could be multiple teams. If multiple teams are working in different cadence, when I say cadence, say like I have team one, which is working on two week sprint. Now, team two, which is working on three week sprint, there will not be any uniformity. As a result, there could be some kind of gaps. At the same time, it's going to be very difficult to find the dependency. Say like if I am working on a particular future and that future is dependent on some other future for team B and if they are not working on the same uh, no, cadence, then it's going to be very difficult for tracking purpose. And uh, again, we can list on the list of uh, drawbacks. So the goal here is to come up with the common cadence so that the entire organization works on the same cadence at the same time trying to identify the dependencies up front and collaborate more and to avoid more gaps. That's why we go to scale. The name itself says we are scaling the agile to the organization level. How do we do that? That's the process, right? So this is the team level. Now the next level is program level. So the goal here is if I have a company where I have 150 team members, right? So we do not want separate teams to do their own work and then no, have some kind of gaps. We wanted to bring all these 150 team members under the one roof. That is why we call it as program increment. Similar to sprint planning, where only my team is going to be there along with the scrum master, product owner and the development team. We are going to have this program increment of 150 people where multiple teams will be involved for planning purpose. Again, this pr program increment itself is a big topic which I will cover in the future sessions. For now, assume that program increment is something like sprint planning where in, during the start of the project or any program, all 150 or 125 people come together and they plan for the work. So when they plan, as per the guidance, it should be a five week sprint. Like in team, we have two week sprint in case of program increment it will be 10 week sprint like you know 10 week is nothing but 5 sprints 
So the first four sprint will be like more of development and one sprint for you know, innovation and planning and then inspect like we do some kind of retrospective. So similar to the sprint we have program where we discuss about future right. So most of the companies as we know we are going to have epic which is the overall idea or their objective and then break that epic into capabilities where like you no know, to implement that idea what kind of you no know, systems i have to have under capabilities i may have futures like each system what kind of futures i'm going to have under future i have user stories currently agile takes care of only the team part now what i am discussing is the program part like features and then we have capabilities and then we have epic so the entire team is going to travel in the same cadence with some set of processes so that we can avoid the dependencies, we can find the dependencies, we can avoid the gaps. So that's the overall goal of Scaled Agile. Now, as I told you, we are going to discuss about futures in the program by using the program increment. And similar to product backlog, we are going to have program backlog. And we have set of roles similar to the team. One is release train engineer. So what he is going to do is he is going to make sure similar to scrum master the entire program increment is going in correct direction or not. And we have product management who can be compared to product owner and the system architect to make sure that the architectural designs are all well informed among all the 150 members. And business owners who can give the business inputs. Now this is the program level. Coming to large solution. So the goal here is to have 150 people under one program increment. Assume that you have a company of 1000 people. Now you should have multiple program increment. So that's why we, uh, we bring in less large solutions. If you have a scenario where you have multiple program increments PI, then we have one more layer which will take care of capabilities. Like I have one capability, under that I can have multiple features, right? If there are more capability, each capability will have their own program increment and then they will try to implement it. So here also we have something like solution backlog and most of the time we we'll have instead of one program increment we will have multiple program increment. Again even so large solution have a list of roles like so instead of release train engineer they will have something like solution train engineer. So instead of product management they will have something like solution management. In the system instead of system architect solution architect instead of business owners customers. If you see all these layers are pretty much same just that they are making sure that they are scaling it one level to another level so that as an organization we are following the agile and lean concepts finally the epic which is the overall business objective under that also our goal is to make sure that the entire flow is there on a uniformity basis and we have specific roles like lean portfolio management epic owners and enterprise architect again as i told you agile sorry scaled agile framework by itself is a very big topic which can take two to two, three days. The goal of today's session is to give you an overall high level information so that you can do more research on it. Now I have talked about lot of benefits of scale right. So why is that not all companies are implementing scaled agile. The reason is the scaled agile can be implemented only if you have a bigger team like a team of 1000. If you have a smaller team then it doesn't make sense for scaled agile because every program increment is going to be a 10 week sprint. If you want to do it in a smaller team, go with agile. Similarly, if your leadership team is not going to buy in with all your you know, proposals, then scaled agile will not work up. Like scaled agile core concept is instead of you no know, top down, it's bottom up, right? So we need to make sure that the entire leadership gets in buy in of the whole process. So I hope you like my training videos. If you like my training videos, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great day. Bye-bye.